Welcome to Wildspire. You get to be a fly on the wall for my intimate conversations with entrepreneurs who are changing the world. I'm your host, Stephanie Benedetto, coach, storyteller, and unmarketer at The Awakened Business, helping coaches and change-making entrepreneurs unleash their inspired message and share it with playful unmarketing. I'll ask curious questions and explore uncharted waters with my guests today. Anything can happen when we step into the unknown of infinite creativity, and that's where we're going to play. My conversation today on the Wild Spire podcast is with a gentleman called Jonathan Broom. He has just a lovely presence, um, a soft voice, and together we explore the idea of purpose, finding your purpose and meaning in your life and discovering what it is that you're here to do. We explore some reflective exercises that Jonathan uses with his clients that you can do along with us to go deeper into that. But even more so, we touch the truth that your presence right now is already a contribution. Let me tell you a little bit more about Jonathan Broom. Jonathan is a dedicated coach with five years of experience in leadership and life skills coaching. Jonathan specializes in helping young adults from generational wealth backgrounds find their purpose and contribute their unique gifts to the world. Jonathan's coaching is rooted in ontology, focusing on the study of being and the heroic journey each individual undertakes. With a professional background in visual design, entrepreneurship, and serving as a purpose-driven leader and board member in his family business, Jonathan brings a diverse skill set to his coaching practice. Jonathan helps people go from feeling lost to becoming leaders in their own lives. He supports those who struggle to take action towards their dreams and seek to perform at their natural best with ease. Beyond his professional skills, Jonathan's personal journey has deeply shaped his understanding of life and his commitment to helping others. He experienced the challenges of finding one's unique path and believes that people can set their support systems and learn success skills so they don't have to wait for a midlife crisis to figure out what they really want in their lives. It is my great pleasure to introduce you to Jonathan Broom. Hello, Jonathan. Welcome officially to my Wildspire podcast. I'm very happy to have you as my guest today. Hello. I'm so excited to be here. So you made an impression on me the first time I saw you in a breakout room, I think, where we were in a group, a community of spiritual entrepreneurs, and you just have this beautiful smile and this lovely presence. And I thought, this is a person I would like to know. And thankfully, we got to know each other. And now I'm happy to have you here on this podcast so I can introduce you to the people in my community. And I love, I love uplifting the voices of people who are doing beautiful things in the world people who are serving and creating. And this I knew about you from the very start. So I would love for you to tell me, Jonathan, I know that you're very passionate about purpose and helping people, especially young people, to discover their purpose. So would you tell me what that means to you and why you're so passionate about it? Thank you for asking. And well, just sharing also that it's such a privilege to be here, Stephanie. You are a wonderful person with such a generous heart. So it's it's amazing to always connect and and share ideas. I always learn a lot from it. So well, what I mean by purpose. That's a really good question. Well, it comes from a deep belief that 
life has a meaning and we are all here for a reason and we all have goals dreams and also gifts to share to the world the dictionary definition of purpose is a reason to which something is done or created along these lines so when i mention working with purpose is really helping people see clearly what is their intentions in life why they do the things they do and also who they are what are their values and i believe this is very important because we all have it but sometimes it's very hard to put words into it because it's an experience to do something and feel meaning and satisfaction fulfillment or to either feel frustration feel lack of purpose so that's what i i mean by that and one of the main reasons why i love working with people through this framework of purpose mm. so what happens in your experience jonathan when people take the time to reflect and then put words to their purpose to the meaning that they give to the life that they have what do you see is the benefit of that yeah well one of the main things is that our brain has a very special ability to give more to us from what we are focused on so there's this great saying that every time you focus on something this expands right and well when you put words into the experience of purpose the why you are here or the why a company exists the why a group exists any kind of of act that moves things forward um this helps you to really first be more aligned with it so you know what to do but also to filter your actions and your intentions for the things that you're not wanting to do that don't go with this contribution so you don't have to have this written down to really have this experience of purpose you can be guided to okay i'm doing this and i have this experience of fulfillment so i'm going this right path and then you can suddenly do something in other areas of your life that doesn't feel right and it can be like that by chance or you can put words into it and be more clear on your focus so you don't have to go to some experiences that's what i think it's really beneficial mm. so if i wanted to find my purpose and maybe put some words to it and you were going to help me do that what would what would you ask me or how would you help me find my purpose? I'm thinking about someone who might be listening or watching and really wants to know. I hear this a lot. A lot of people come to me and say too, like, I really want to know what I'm here to do. What's my calling? How would you help someone like that? Well, the first thing is be sure that you have a purpose 
because sometimes this question is like, I'm wondering if I have a purpose. And yes, you do. You're here for a reason and your presence in this world is a contribution. We are having this conversation right now, me and Stephanie, because people are listening to it. So even by listening to something, you're contributing to the lives of others because you're making this podcast happen, right? So that's the first part. Well, the second thing that I would say is that I believe that the purpose is something that it's quite the same for your entire life. The reason why you show up at work, the way you show up with your friends, it's all the same. So the way you write it may change, but it comes from the same source. And with that comes the idea that when you look to your past, so this is how I could help someone, is you look to experiences that were really impactful for you, people you really admire, people who in your young ages help you see something different from life or really sometimes even traumatic experiences you had they they happen with really powerful emotional states so something that one can do by themselves is to have a list like five to ten powerful experiences they had like something someone they really loved, something that went really bad in their lives. And then you can ask yourself, what did I learn from that? And what is the contribution to my life or to the lives of others from that learning? Probably you see a pattern emerging. Mm. But also, there are like many ways to do it, um, to put like, to create a purpose statement. But I want to offer you like an exercise as well. And you can do this at home. And you can do this right now, Stephanie. It's one of my favorite exercises. It's amazing. Really, I love it. So, think about someone you really admire. Let's make a list of three people you really admire. Um, if you have the time to, to grab a pen and write down, you can do it. Otherwise, you can do it in your head. Now, I want you to put into words what you really admire about them. And you say it as an adjective, like this person is courageous, this person is loving, is generous. There may be uh, some three to five words that repeat from those three people out there. Now, do you see some of them, some of those adjectives about those people? Are you willing to share it right now? Sure. I was thinking of 
some people who I admire and the words that come up are irreverent, playful, joyful, heartfelt, wise, loving, generous, smart, like very clever, <laughs> creative. Yeah. I could probably keep going, but those are the ones yeah. that, that come right away. Now, if I were to like keep going with you, I would say, okay, so out of those 10 words that you have on top of your mind right now, let's pick three that when you say it, it gives a little smile on your face. It has something in your heart when you say it. Uh, what would you say? So you, you mentioned irreverent, playful. I, I did. I smiled big when I said that. I think I felt that I was like irreverent. I love that. It's yeah. Kind of like, like a little naughty and playful and irreverent. You know, it's not like irreverent in a bad way, but like, I'm going to mess with you. Mischievous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you also mentioned playful. Let's, mm -hmm. let's keep it three. Okay. Yeah, playful and playful. And And I like this, this heartfelt, like heartfelt loving that, that type of word. Yeah. Heartfelt loving. Beautiful. Now, and also guiding you if you're doing this at home. Okay. So that's the key point. Did they mention any person to you to use this exercise on or not it was in your in your mind in your heart right and i didn't mention any word to pick you said it mm -hmm. that's true so are you willing to see that this is who you are And, you know, a lot of people, when they do this for the first time, it's like, nah, this is what I love about people. It's not who I am. But it came from you. And you can only see it because you have it in yourself. So the finish line of this exercise, which is like really the starting point, if you're putting practice into it, as when you are in a situation where you feel frustrated or even resignated in some area of your life, you can see it at this list. Look at it and see, well, I am irreverent, playful, heartfelt, loving. This is who I am. And what would the person who is irreverent, sorry, irreverent, playful, or heartful loving do in this situation? So you're aligning yourself with an action that comes from who you really are. Mm. That's cool. What is interesting to me about this is that when many people come to me asking about their purpose, they are assuming that their purpose is something they do. It is a job that they have. It is a skill that they possess. And what you're pointing to is that your purpose is not what you do, it's who you are. It's who you be. So what do you see about that? Jonathan, about the confusion that people have with their doing sometimes around purpose. Yeah, it's, it's a very natural thing to like make our identities be our jobs or our family, our community, 
my church, something like that. Well, I love the work of Simon Sinek, which really inspired me to go in this path that I'm on today. And he has a beautiful concept about the golden circle, which is basically three circles, one inside the other. The outer circle is the what. So a lot of people know what they do. And in the time Simon Sinek gave this talk, many companies were just talking about what they did. And this doesn't inspire anyone because it's not connected to their hearts. So, well, I sell computers. It's not something like, oh my God, I really want to believe this person or this brand. Um, and the same thing happens with jobs. So, yeah, I work at finances. I work with public health. Any job, it's a what. Inside this what, it's a how. So less people know how they do it. And less people communicate how they do it. But sometimes it's effective. Uh, so some brands may say that, well, we tell computers that are have really good processors and it's really fast and it's a really good computer and we do this with a lot of design. It's a how. And the same thing happens in people's lives. Well, I'm not just a doctor. I am really good at eye surgery. I can do like really different things with it and I help a lot of people with it and they mention a lot of hows and the inner circle, as you said, the being of the person is the why they do what they do. It comes from who they are. And I also believe that every company, even if it's not a purpose based company can find the why of the company as well. It has a heart in it. And every person has it too. So in, in this framework that I believe Simon Sinek did perfectly, when you mentioned I'm not sure about my purpose, uh, you, you can work with a purpose statement, the why. And it has a certain structure. So this helps people understand better what to look for when they want to write down some kind of purpose statement which I think it's very interesting. In the first part, they have an action that is a contribution because your presence is always a contribution and you move your community something towards some kind of direction just by being present. And this contribution creates a certain impact you can say it in the world, but it's really in the heart as the word is your community, your family, your church, the groups you're in. It's the experience that the world is a little better because you're here. So I can mention mine to, to make it more clear. Uh, the way I did my purpose statement is that my purpose is to support others discover their purpose. So to support others is the contribution. And the impact that comes next is to support others discover their purpose so they can live the life they are meant to be living. And you see, it doesn't mention being a coach, which is what I do. It doesn't mention being a board member. But in every place that I'm in, 
when I look at this, I try to be the presence of a light that support others to really be their best selves. That's mm. how it helps me. Mm. Now I am moved to embody the energies of irreverence, playfulness, and a heartfelt loving presence yeah <laughs> and and mess with this just a little bit please please now, first of all i think that what you're saying and what you're doing is absolutely beautiful Thank you. i think that showing people what lives in their heart what wants to be expressed and created through them is amazing and for people who are doubting, for someone who's wondering, do I even have a purpose? When you said, you do, with total confidence, I heard that, and it felt wonderful. And I went through, I actually hired a coach specifically for something he called his purpose mapping journey. And wow. this, this coach is, is called Craig Filet. And it was a wonderful experience where he took me through this a rich journey through many personality typing systems to pull out words I resonated with and rejected the things I loved and the things I didn't to look at them both the aspirational, the things that I admire, and the things that are my shadow. It was so involved. I would never have done this on my own, not in a million years. And we took all of that and boiled it down to a purpose statement. And it was a, it was a really fun journey. And I don't use that statement, and I haven't looked at that statement. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's funny because I, I loved more about the journey than I was about creating this, this thing that we come up with. There was a purpose, there was a mission, there was a value, there were um, milestones. And then here's what I'm going to do and habits every day. And I was like, yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> but, it, but it was valuable. I, I'm not saying it just wasn't for me like that. Yeah. But I came away with an understanding about myself and how people see me that I did not have before. And the way I see my purpose now, the way I would say it, very simply, this is just for me, is to be me. Which is really what you're pointing to. You're saying, these things you admire, these things you love, these things that inspire you, that is you. That is you being you. And you can do it no matter what your job is or where you go or who you are with. I well point, said. Yeah, I point this out only to remind us not to get hung up on this. If it brings light and joy and awareness and inspiration... That is exactly what it's for. If it starts to become heavy, if it feels like now it's something you have to live up to that you never will, you can't not be yourself. Now, I can feel not myself, but that's not, not being myself. I'm always myself. When I feel like I'm not myself, what I'm feeling is this narrative in my head, are these thoughts of judgment and comparison, whatever it is that's happening here, that's not me. Me, I live in that, that place of relaxed inspiration and the feeling that we have when we know we are exactly where we're meant to be doing exactly what we're meant to do and i come back to 
this is a little bit possibly irreverent. <laughs> Please. That the best purpose I could possibly have to do anything is because I want to. Yeah. Because like that, it took me a really long time to know that that was a good reason to do something. I thought I had to have good reasons, justifications. It had to make sense. And when I say I want to, I desire it. It feels good. In other words, it's a clean desire. It's not coming from it doesn't feel selfish. Selfishness doesn't feel good, actually. If you think about, I, when I think about when I've done something that was motivated by greed, like take, like I want this, right? Like that doesn't actually feel good. There might be moments when I think it feels good, but it really doesn't. It leaves me with ick. But doing something from a pure desire does feel good. And that's being me. It's, it's what life is inviting through me. So I will, I will pause there. Hopefully that wasn't too irreverent, but it was meant as an expansion of this, which you're already talking about. So what, what comes up for you? I'm curious. I'm so glad you're bringing this, really. Wow. You know, something that I wonder sometimes, I have been to, like, a place of questioning this idea sometimes and going back and forth with it, is that the word purpose sometimes creates some stiffness in the mind because it's too big to handle. And I, I see you're pointing out to something that has to do with it, which is when we talk a lot about this, you can either be having the experience that this is something good, you're on this path, or this can create more, create more confusion in people and and yeah sometimes I even ask if keeping using the world the word in this framework of purpose um, is the best way to communicate what I'm sharing because the heart of it as you said is the being being you And also, a way to say it, if for some reason uh, you're having this experience right now that, well, might be too complicated, I don't even know where to start, know that you see that you have intentions in life. You have goals and dreams, which is what Stephanie is saying when she mentioned desires. Uh, it's just a different word for it, but it's it has the same heart. You have intentions, and in your heart of hearts, you know that you're here to make a difference, even to yourself, even the small, smallest difference. You want to know that when life ends, the world was just a little bit better because you were here. And that's all, all it is about purpose. You, you being you, and you moving forward, the intentions that you have in life. That has a beautiful feeling, Jonathan. I was just feeling the gift of every life. Yeah. And I mean every life. 
even the people who my little mind might go, oh, but not them. Surely you don't mean that person. And this is where I think there's a friend of mine was struggling around this idea of value, of their worth, saying, I don't know my value, which lives right next door to purpose, right? Because if I have a purpose, I have value. If I don't have a purpose, I'm purposeless. I have no value. I mean nothing. And I, I understood this in one sense because if I imagine myself thinking I have no value, I have no purpose, it feels horrible. But then what I don't understand is that this person loves people and sees the natural born value in every person without doing anything, without saying anything, simply being. Like when I, when I go outside and I look at this tree, I look at the ocean, does it have value? Does it have worth? Does it have a purpose? Now, not in the way that a person can. I don't think someone might tell me I'm wrong, but I don't think that a tree thinks about its purpose. And yet without trees, without plants, our life on this planet could not survive. We couldn't breathe the very air. Without the oceans, we couldn't have life. And even the smallest things, maybe they seem purposeless, but they can't be. What's interesting is that as humans, we create meaning. And it seems to be very important to us to have a sense of that meaning, a sense of purpose, a sense of why I'm, am I here and what is my life for? And yet when I zoom out, I see the perfection of it with or without a meaning. And I think a meaning is just another beautiful way we have to express the aliveness and the perfection of being a part of life. And none of that contradicts any of what you're saying as far as I see it. You know, it's just showing another side of it or um, exploring it from a different angle. Because I feel what you're saying and what you feel, what you're saying feels like this to me. Yeah. Well, a, a great teacher said to me that those are, there are four, four realms in the metaphysics and they have different contexts. So they can be right, even though it seems like different, yes. you know? So in, in the realm of creation, uh, the experience of purpose, as you said, can be the experience of, you don't have to, to even put words into it. Because it's just, as it is, it's perfect as it is. This can be seen from like cosmology or also from theology. Uh, what I'm sharing here, so there are four, four realms, this is like, the main ones. Uh, the other one is psychology. And you mentioned perfectly when you said the work of this coach who looks at your shadow, your habits, your goods and bad things, things you don't want, things you want. Um, it's also important, but it's in a specific context. 
the context I'm sharing is ontology. So even though you have emotions, you you can learn for you learn from the experiences you have and see the lessons and what your intentions in life in your life as from this cosmology and theological point it's just the experience of itself some people could mention it's like uh being in meditation and just being present to the moment or to the universe so that's what i'm seeing about those different points of view is that they are all present but they're just different contexts to which you apply the things that you need yes that's brilliant jonathan and that i've heard this expressed as i usually um think about it as the and the, the three principles, um, spiritual articulation as the universal and the personal. Yeah. So the personal is Stephanie, is being human, is this experience. And then the universal is all that is the, the larger spiritual perspective, which probably aligns more with both creation and maybe the ontological realms you're talking about. But the the personal is very much psychology, right? Like the individual, yeah. what's going on up here. What was the fourth where that was? So you have you... theology, which is the experience theology. of God and creation. And you have like cosmology, which is the creation of the world through physics, through this, the context of like, yeah, I would say physics. All the world is created, living things, biology, all the, cities of nature beautiful so i love the ability that we have to talk about this from different perspectives and to be with them this is also a unique human ability to be with these apparent paradoxes and find find the place to be in the moment that comes with that feeling of lightness and expansion that brings us what we need in this moment. And I find that when I go to the universal and then come back to the personal, or perhaps if I went to the theological and then came to these others, approach the others, it has a different, it looks different. It, it's got more space to it. I don't take it so seriously because I know my, my true place in the the most when i say true place it sounds like the others are lesser um the others change that's what it is they're not lesser they're change my psychology is incredibly changeable but what is just is yeah that's that's really beautiful and wise yeah mm. wow So hmm, what's the most surprising thing that you have discovered either about yourself or in helping people discover their purpose? What surprised you the most? Great question. Well, I will say this from the point of view that I learned through the school that I've been, the coaching school, which is, it's a great learning, but it surprises me every single time because it's a practice that I have to, to be willing to do it like this. So It's really being with people and seeing that they already have all their own answers. It's not the, as you said, not the role of the coach to, to say something to you about who you are, to, to give a purpose statement. And 
when you hold the space for people to really have their own answers, you can be so surprised by how wise they are. And the funny thing about the journey is that it's, you know, it's normal for our minds to be in the way of us seeing how great we are. And for me, that's the most beautiful surprise it is, is how when people see me for who I am, I am surprised how by how big this is. And I love having this experience with other people as well, that I can coach them. And it's one of the things that not only surprises me, but really excites me and gives me a lot of emotion is how great you, Stephanie, are at holding this space of seeing people from who they really are. And for me, that's the most beautiful part of this journey. I love that we can do this for each other and with each other. As soon as we really get present, start being with what's happening right here and less with what I'm thinking about it. I just I just attended a three-day listening summit. So I am going to talk about it a little. And one of the speakers there, she's been a guest on my podcast. Her name is Mavis Karn. She said, I listen. I listen until I can feel the golden cord that connects me with this person. Mm. I see, my job is to see the perfection and wisdom that they are, what you just spoke to, Jonathan. And when I'm not thinking, you know, I can have thoughts, but I'm not actively thinking them. And I'm just being, and I am listening, like I'm listening to music. It is obvious. It is undeniable. I feel that connection. And it is both the universal and the personal. It is, it is being with the reflection of me. It's like God seeing God. It's the universe seeing the universe. And also this unique expression that can only come through Jonathan that is just for you will never exist like this again. So on the one hand, completely unique and special, and on the other hand, an ordinary miracle. And that we can do that that we can see each other. And I imagine if someone was listening to this and they had no idea what we're talking about, but they can feel something, that's it. You can feel that connection. And some people haven't felt that with another person, but they have felt that with a pet or maybe in nature. So, Thank you. And I think that's what a beautiful surprise that is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So if there was one thing, Jonathan, that you could share with someone that you think would make the biggest positive difference in their life, what would that be? What would you want them to know? Well, I will give you something to use because uh, as we said in this podcast, 
There are many things that I believe you are. You have a purpose, you have goals and dreams, you have a desire to make a contribution. And you can know this in your mind, but I want to give you something to use that it's very simple, not something like out of the box magic happens. But if you if you use it, it's a gift to move you forward. So get this perspective you have in your heart, those goals and dreams and also this reflection as we did this exercise together, Stephanie, um, of qualities of being that you are. And sometimes you just, you know, have thoughts that say otherwise, that our thoughts of worry and doubt, we all have it, especially when something important comes up. So the gift that I want to give people is a simple phrase that they can use that really brings their heart, their purpose, if you will, their being forward, which is nevertheless, I am willing. When you use it, um, it creates new pathways on your brain to see opportunities to really be who you are. And you can use this in, in any situation when you're showing up to something that is important to you. Nevertheless, I am willing. And you can go through this with way more ease and move this forward. So let me just make sure I understand if I am in a situation where I'm feeling a lot of pressure and doubt is coming up, I would remember, nevertheless, kind of setting all this aside, I am willing. Yeah. I am willing to be here. I am willing to do this. I am willing to be me. I am willing just whatever comes up. Is that your experience of that? Yeah. And you can either use the exercise that I said, nevertheless, I'm willing to be playful. Aha. Uh -huh. to be uh, reverent. Mm -hmm. You can use it as a bonus. Yeah, I like that. Oh, that's great. You know, Stephanie have this amazing space of listening. And even with all of that, I entered this space with some worries, like, uh, will I say the things right? Will I be able to express myself the way I want? Will people get value from this? Normal thoughts from when we are about to do something important. And in which I really used today, nevertheless, I am willing. And I have in my cell phone, like in the wallpaper, the, those qualities, the way I mentioned, I have it here to remind myself every day mm. about who I am. Mm. That's beautiful. Well, I have no doubt about any of those things that you were wondering perhaps before, value, expressing yourself, all of those things. So if, if someone would like to learn more about you, and what you do in the world, where would they, where's the best place for them to go? Well, if you want to learn more about what I do in, in a way that is more clear and organized, you can check my website, which is my name, jonathanbroom.com. Or you can follow me on Instagram, Jonathan Broom Coaching. Um, 
yeah and you can ask me any question i love to interact with people there and i'm open to really support even if it's someone coming from a really different background you know you might not want to work with me you might just want to ask something i'm open to all of those experiences because i really believe in helping people see possibility for their lives mm -hmm. gorgeous thank you so much jonathan for being so honest so real and so grounded in what it is you're doing i really feel it and so heartfelt it's very mm -hmm. appreciated thank you so much for listening to it and also to make the best questions you know it was a wonderful conversation and i was also grateful that i learned a lot not only from sharing but also from your experiences and perspectives as well perfect <laughs> Thanks so much for joining me for today's Wildspire conversation. If you'd like to receive a weekly Wildspire email from me filled with inspiring stories, unmarketing experiments, tips for playing your way to impact and income without the hustle and hype, insights from my spiritual business journey, and more, go to theawakenedbusiness.com forward slash Wildspire. Until next time, may you know yourself as the gorgeous wild creation you are.